So this is where we are <laughs> and how we threw away our career to, to pursue this food, yeah? <laughs> this tiny crayfish in Germany than uh, becoming daughter, lawyers, our dream, you know, our dream profession, what we wanted to be. So this is how we came to this dream and how we got here. This does not only happen to Africans, it happens in every nation. You know, when you open a shop, you'll be thinking that people you know are coming to patronize it. <laughs> it's not really like that. When you have a shop, some people are like, either they are shocked. This is that is that I'm this is my last release. Some of the things that happen when people open a shop, the way I ask them and how friends and their neighbors explain to me, it's like, we are here now with you, yeah? We are here with you. From nowhere, you want to rise up higher than us. So people are like a kind of envious, trying to realize what happened. So they will come and greet you and they'll go to another place and buy something. They find it difficult to come and patronize you. Mostly it's much in women than it's in men. They don't know why you should open the shop even. Sometimes when you want to open the shop, they encourage you so that you don't say they are the one who told you not to open the shop. So that they don't be your enemy. But coming really to patronize you is a problem. And when you're falling, they see that this thing you're doing is not working. They go behind you. They laugh at you. Even some of them who are nice or whatever, they come to tell you what this person is saying about you. How they're laughing at you. It was really tough for us. How people mocked us. How they laughed at us to see that we're not succeeding. And until we met our own people who came like telling others that we are here introducing us to people introducing people to us this is how we later picked up and start running this hour Ujubu Afro show and this when I say hour I stressed it in the sense that this shop is somehow physically not our own yeah we invested in we do it's not our own it's like a family it's like a place we meet to talk about our problem any kind of problem you are new here you you've not been long here there's a kind of problem you have you come to us here in germany in Dusseldorf, of germany anywhere this is shop like this shop when you have ojuku afro shop what you should think about it is like and this is exactly how it is when you can ask around they will tell you ojuku afro shop is like one big family where it doesn't matter if you live in SM, Fobatai, um, Langerfeld, Hilden, just name it, Azolengen, around here. Anywhere you live around here, people come there to ask, what am I going to do this situation I am in? What am I going to do? What do I do now? Where do I go from here? You, you ask this question, we must have had somebody who tell this kind of your problem and who ask the person. It's a kind of place that sometimes when people want to rent house they say what am i going to do the people have problem with the office also they say where am i going from here then you can say okay go to this place ask the place have you gone to this place have you gone to this office things like that this is our family where we meet when somebody gets boring at home and the person wants to come out and meet people this is the place when person come newly and you don't know where to go from here this is the place ojuku afro shop is well known around here and not around Versal, even in germany you ask people they will tell you because the shop has been long it has been here so even when you ask you i see black people in the train station and ask them you want to go to jukwa fro shop they will bring you there so at last we are able to build a family a community that we can say oh this is a place and that was the dream that was the dream that quest we have of having a family people can call our own Mostly in this strange place we call Germany, it's not our home before. Where we can say, when anything happens, we have people to rely on. That we can say, we're united. Mostly this opportunity for me to thank our guys. Not that I'm not thanking our women. I appreciate our women more. Because we tell them, what can we do? Because we do the cooking. Yeah, the women appreciate them more. But, you know, women are like, we are silent, you know. Or the men are like you hear about them you, you you before you call the person them one other man no because they're the ones who are coming out you know that's it 
that we come together as one big family and i use this opportunity because we say our guys i include the yorubas our Beninese, all of them the blacks the nigerians the cameroon the ghana these are people that big family they've been patronizing us and i'm sorry if i don't call your country because we are a lot here we are a lot and we come to patronize the shop so i want to thank you guys so much for watching my video this is how we managed to open our shop and thank you if you're also here for the first time my name is Cynthia and this is a place where I tell my stories what we've been through here in Germany how we struggled how we met me and my husband how we struggled to train our children how we battle here in Germany a lot of battle here in the office yeah for you to succeed and achieve some things here there's a lot of battle unless you just want to go to walk sleep you don't want to, a kind of rise a little bit and become somebody there's a lot of no 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 this is a country when you want to do anything the first thing we hear or bear in mind that they're going to stay in nine get niche we they had a lot of this get niche and this is also the reason for our video that we tell you the kind of get niche we got here that is not going to happen that is not done like this in germany that you're not going to be able to open this place and things like that these are obstacles we had on our way when we are struggling to open our shop it's one of the most popular shop in germany and <laughs> how we even started all this is we are our history of having this beautiful ojuku afro shop <coughs> trusting a man you don't know <coughs> sometimes we believe on what people said when people tell us something we believe them they are telling us the truth but in this our relationship before the shop I was believing everything he said but because i'm a woman and many people have said many things to me so i started believing on things i see no matter what you tell me that one i see is what i believe in you can tell me i'll buy you a car i'll buy you a plane yes i believe you and i trust you but until i see it i'm not counting on it i want to see it and touch it then i believe you've done it and you give it to me and you go even i'll say yes it's my own you have given it to me because a lot of lies a lot of deceit people tell you many things what your ear needs to hear at the end of it they don't keep to the promise so luckily one day he called me and he confirmed my name and things like that again and he sent me this huge sum of money i was like what's the money for he's like ah the shop you said you wanted to i was like oh my god i couldn't believe it and i was so happy and satisfied in myself that i saw this young guy and i believed in him and things like that. i didn't know he have so much money like this to give me for this shop can you believe it there's a limit to the support the state can give you before i was counting on the state to give me money for this shop like people always give us wrong information telling us that if you want to start shop here in germany the state is going to give you a huge sum of money so i'm here today to confirm to you that i'm a victim also in this kind of stories they will tell you everything but there's nothing like that that the state will count money or pay into your account to give you to start business this does not exist here at least here in germany i'm a victim i try to open shop with uh, hoping that they're going to give you money there's something like that forget what people are telling you. so after he gave me the money i stayed with this money like close to two years and i couldn't stay Shop. the landlords want to know what you earn monthly from your profession now excluding what you'll be making from the we continue looking to, for the shop i now came to realize that these people wouldn't give me the shop because i have no income in germany here it's like this that people want to see where your income is coming from before they will give you this shop then we gave up that we are not going to get the shop and my husband was like okay it's even better because there's no way you're going to hold this case during this time i also gave birth to another child so it was like how do you manage this shop with these two little kids one is a a young three months the other one is three years and three months there's no way i would handle this like babies at the same time handling shop so i decided also not to make a shop because my hands are like full then 
One day I was here and my husband then called me and asked me how I'm still planning on opening the shop. I'm like, ah, I thought we said we should leave the shop. He said, I pray today you should go and look for the shop. That was on Tuesday morning. Then I say okay, because somehow we believe each other when we a thought is disturbing us, when an instinct is disturbing us, we take it serious and we believe in it, we we'll work on it, and it has always worked out. So I bought it and I went looking for the shop. I remember that very I went around to Zedorf, considering the people who we patronize you and where to find them matters a lot. By that time, I forgot also to tell you, we have moved to Dusseldorf. We moved again from that city to another city, Dusseldorf, because we couldn't find shop there because that place we were before is also not very very open like this it's like we're finding more difficult to get shop here so we say let's move to another little bigger city than where we were before so now we came here we continue looking for the shop that very day I was going around looking looking taking numbers from places where they say shops are for rent writing them down so i found one number and that was the last shop I saw that very day, and I wrote this number down. On getting home, I called these people. I called them. This last shop I took was the last number, and it was the only number that answered me that very day. I was so happy. I made an appointment with this man. The next day, I went to meet this man. Funny enough, I was asking the man question concerning the shop. And the man was still not giving me a good reply. He was not communicating with me. He was not giving me answers concerning the shop. And he suddenly asked me why it's taking my mother too much time to pack. I was like, my mother? That very day, you won't believe it. I wore big clothes, very big clothes to make this man think I'm mature, to make him see he can hand me this shop and believe I can carry out the responsibilities concerning the shop, the man still think I am small. <laughs> you don't believe it? That I was too small to handle the, this kind of a thing. And he thought my daughters were my sisters. Funny. <laughs> so I convinced him that my mother is in Africa and this shop, I was the person who called and wanted to do this shop. Then the man was questioning me, interrogating me. He wanted to get convinced that he can trust me and hand me the shop. To cut a lot story short again, so the man was like, okay, go home. I will discuss with the person who owns the shop. I'm the caretaker. I'm the caretaker. When I finish discussing with the person, I will tell you what we conclude. I went to my was praying, God, God, I called my husband. I told him, ah. Look at what happened. So my husband now said, okay, let's see. A few days later, this man called me and I came. He handed me the key of the shop after he asked me to pay the money. I was like so happy that this man can trust me and give me the shop. This was where we started. And this was the beginning of our stress. We never knew that this thing is like this. Being somebody, some time ago, I paid for one shop. I forgot to tell you. In Dusseldorfia, when I find the shop, the first time I forgot to tell you. The shop had no toilet, no store, and it was very small. If you don't like 100%, please don't sign. The man, because the shop is in this area form, is a very tiny shop. And the man couldn't give me the shop because I didn't complete it costume and i regretted paying for this place because it was so small but sometimes when you're desperate when somebody is desperate you're like okay let me start here even the place was so small and i regretted renting that place i was like i better not pay for completely for this place if the landlord is dubious or the contract is unfair do you know what happened as if i knew the man didn't balance me back the money instead he started treating me with lawyer telling me that I read up what is, was in there. I shouldn't have uh, signed the document if I don't want to take the shop there like that. The man started threatening me at the end of it. He couldn't balance me the money. Then when my husband got the news that the money for the shop was gone, let me remind you that this money, I've heard it for 
two years plus this money i've started taking some money from it because I, you can remember in my last video that i told you these people here couldn't accept us i was not getting help i didn't have work i have kids in my hand it was stressful for me i didn't have oh god it was too much with bills my husband was paying everything for us it was too much paying for him they are paying for us it was too much for us the money for the shop is a kind of reduce when i've already used part of it to pay this concern and now i'm trying to use it to pay concern here so it was hard it's a long story i'm trying to cut it as short as possible then we pay for the shop here the concern and the for that month so there was no much money left for me to renovate the place no much money left for me to enrich the means to put some cupboard in it and start running the shop and start buying goods and things like that it was tough and i couldn't blame my husband to tell him how difficult it is because he, he knows how much money i should have left when i pay for this amount when he might not say you know but that money i was selling was not in my hand sorry that i have to lie to because I couldn't bring myself to tell him how I've wasted the money. Then, at the end of it all, he called me one day and uh, asked me to make video of the shop pictures and show him how far I've gone. So, I now made picture. Maybe, like how everybody does this thing. Initially, he doesn't want to give me any more money because it's like the one he has given me, it's already lost so why should he go ahead and give me more money when the one he has given me he's not seeing the result of it so he made us like within some months really suffer in the shop struggle with the shop not doing well not before he starts getting his money whatever he has invested it and start putting in the shop to see before we could you know a kind of um, buckle up like a kind of Start doing well in the shop. It took us a while. Following other things, other mistakes people made, this kind of mistake made in Germany and also other interesting stories, love stories, marriage and marriage problems of start course with my first in marriages and in life. These are stories I'm bringing your way. Thank you for watching my video so far and I hope you subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much. See you next time. Bye. Your girl, Cynthia.